Welcome back to Cloud's Retirement Chat. I am John Jagge, joined again by Tommy Cloud. Always good to be with you, sir. Thank you, John. It's always good to be here. So today we're talking about when is the best time to retire? And this is kind of a loaded question, I think, for some people, and a question that people really tend to debate a lot about. But let's start at the beginning. If somebody is coming into your office, Tommy, and wants to know when is the best time to retire, it's going to start with them having to consider a few different questions, right? That's absolutely correct. One of the things, everyone comes in with a different situation, and it's one of the number one questions that we answer here. As Even as we go up in net worth, because you got to remember, the higher person's net worth, maybe they want a second home. Maybe they want to travel more. Maybe they want to travel internationally more. Maybe they want to have nicer cars. Maybe they want to keep their country club membership every night. Yeah. What people come to me is they want to know, you know, do I have enough money to retire? And it's such a great question and it re requires so many different calculations of looking at what they plan on spending versus how much they have, how much retirement income do they already have? How much are we going to be able to generate conservatively and safely in their accounts to make sure that they don't outlive their money? People are living longer and longer. As I've, I think I've mentioned on this show before, when I entered this industry in 2000, men were living to be about 70 years old. And now men on average are being, living to be 76. Women, on the other hand, when I entered this industry, were living to be 76. That was in 2000 or 1998, actually. Mm -hmm. 2000 is when I started this business. And then now women are living to be, on average, 80 years old. They're still outliving us. We haven't caught up to them. I just want to be clear on that, right? We haven't caught them yet, however, with more and more women entering the workforce, you do see that gap has closed a little bit over the you know past 21, 20 years. That is interesting. The idea, I guess, being behind it, if you want to live longer and don't have to work, don't. That's right. So you want to know if somebody has enough money to retire. And the, as you said, so many different variables go into it, Tommy. When, But how do you calculate, once you've done that, when should somebody retire and when should they stop working? All of my clients have a financial plan that we review on a yearly basis, regardless of where they come in, that's that's the base level. They, they may not be a wealth management client, but even if they're an investment management client, we're still gonna be doing a financial plan for them. We wanna make sure that they're gonna be prepared for retirement. So they should probably retire when we have a high degree of confidence after running their investments and going through hypothetical market crashes, reviewing worst case scenarios, where we believe that they'll be able to live to a certain age. And usually the age that I use with my clients is 85 or 90. Just based on averages and go a little bit higher than the average, right? Well, that's exactly right. I, I don't want to end up, you know, and I'm always thinking worst case scenario, just I've been in this business so long, there's always so many lawsuits and things that I've seen and witnessed. And I'm just envisioning myself doing financial planning for someone and they, they I get called into a court lawsuit and they say, well, Mr. Cloud, you only had this person planning till age 75. Why would you do that? You know, when the average age is this. So when clients make it to age 62, and typically the average age of my client is in their 60s, that's the average age for me. So if they even make it to 62, their chances of making it to 76 for men and 80 for women is even higher. If they even can make it to 62, then 65, it just keeps going up. So uh, when they should stop working is the same answer. It's when we can put together a plan that makes sense with considering market crashes, what their desired comfortable level of retirement is, and how important are those things. You know, is they may say, well, we want to have a second home. Okay. Do you want to pay cash for it? Do you want to put down 5%, 10%, 20%, 50%? Uh, are you willing to rent it out? You know? What kind of income can we make if you rent it out? They, or we want to travel the world. Or, you know, we, we like to buy a, a, a new Mercedes every five years. Or we buy a new car every five years. Whatever it may be. And so we'll say, okay, well, we'll put that in there. We've got our daughter's weddings coming up. Or whatever it may be. Or a granddaughter, or grandchildren, grandson. So it's always something that we have to put in there and just kind of move the needle around. Okay, well, you can retire here without this. But if we add these other items in that you want to uh, remodel your kitchen for $40,000 or you want to travel internationally, you know, twice a year for, for a month, 
And so it just depends on what they're trying to do and they have to make the decision on what's important to them. It really comes down to that whole cliche about every individual situation being different and knowing, okay, I want to do X, Y, and Z, but to do that, I need this amount of money in retirement to be able to draw off of, maybe I do have to work an additional two or three years, or maybe I'm where I need to be now and maybe I can stop. That's exactly it. And everyone handles these situations differently. I remember one of my favorite clients and uh, I, I really do care for him and his wife. They're such great people. It's, it's because of their humility. They're, they're my largest clients. They were both, both of them were CRNA nurses. And as you know, their income for both of them was about, in today's dollars, they would be making, if they were both working still, $170,000 each. So in today's dollars, their income was about $340,000 a year for two decades or more. Okay. And they only had two kids and they were able to save up quite a bit of money. And he just, when I first started working with him, I'll never forget. He goes, you know, Tom, I just, I, I just don't want to have to eat cat food when I'm older. And so we have a bunch of jokes. We use cat food, you know, no cat food. And we have jokes like that, but it's just amazing to me that someone that had saved this much money, no debt, um, very low uh, expenses. Uh, over a, let's say, 23 to 25 year period would be concerned about, you know, eating cat food. But every single person, I have some people coming, I have one of my clients, she's in her 80s now, and she just, and I've told her, I said, well, you know, Vicki, I can only get you to age 85. Hmm. And she goes, well, that's okay. Um, if I run out of money, that's fine. I'll just, I guess I'll just have to move in with my ex-husband. By that time, he'll be 92 and he won't be such an old codger. <laughs> so literally you have someone that's going to run out of money uh, by age 85. And you have someone that would, with their current expenses, they could honestly, they, they could probably live in the income we're generating, assuming they keep getting their retirement benefit. They could probably live a million years and not run out of money. It's just not Unless they jacked up their expenses or they lost some of their income, which I, I wouldn't foresee happening. And, and they both respond to it differently on, on how they want to live their lives. The cat food inside joke you have with them is funny because fear is such a strong motivator. And I'm sure that you see this with clients a lot where they are terrified out of something they saw in the news or something they saw happen to a previous generation or someone in their family where they were living off cat food, maybe not literally, but pretty close to it. It's amazing how that can drive someone's decision-making process. And I got to imagine part of your role is to be more objective and whereas they're more emotional because it's their money. It's amazing to me. They've done these studies time and time and time again about living longevity and you know how long people live and they've showed people that serve people people that have close friends or family members hopefully both are the people that live the longest they have the they're they're less stressed less heart attacks less things like that of course i don't believe that the number one cause of heart attacks is stress i think it's diet and exercise i'm, I'm not suggesting that but i do think stress there's no doubt contributes to it uh, migraine headaches um, all types of things sleeplessness poor health and so it lowers your immune system. And going back to that client of the no cat food, which is just, I tell you what, if he's gonna end up eating cat food, for the most part, if this guy's gonna be eating cat food, everybody's gonna be eating cat food. I mean, it's just, you know, they've saved up all this money and their expenses are low, they have no debt. And, uh, you know, in today's dollars, if you're, in today's dollars, if you're making $340,000 a year for 23 years, you're, and you're saving, quite a bit of it. And nurses have the highest um, percentage of savings, typically for a lot of the professions. They, on average, save about 12% a year per nurse. So hypothetically, if they were saving 24% of 340,000 plus those investments grow over 23 years, that's, that's a decent amount of money. Absolutely. You can't put a price on sleeping at night. And that's what he's so grateful to me for. I mean, he's, he's told me he left his friend of 20, 20 something years, 26 years, they've been friends. He left him to come to me because he'd moved out of the state. Of course, I'm not in the same state. They're, they're in Michigan, and I'm in Georgia. And actually, I've never met him face to face. Well, as you know, I'm in Michigan, too. And I'm looking out my uh, office window here at about a foot of snow and 10 degrees. So I'm a little bit jealousy right now. I know you guys got a cold uh, down there, too, but it's pretty chilly up here. Well, we were, we were um, 67 degrees here yesterday, sunny. And today, we're rainy and 58. I'll take so, it. It, it's different, but, but people are underestimating the, the value that comes with working with somebody you trust or choosing to trust somebody 
and, and taking their advice. And those are the clients that do the best. And just the impact it has, he just tells me, he said, you know, you've given me peace in mind. At the end of my meetings, I'll say, I'll ask my clients, I'll say, what are we doing well that you want to see us keep doing? What are we not doing that you want to see us do? What would you rate our services to you on a scale of one to 10? And I asked him these questions. He goes, you know, Tommy, with, with your services for me, he goes, for me, it's the sleep test. How do I sleep at night? That's how I judge what you're doing. And he said, I sleep real well. I've slept better than I ever have regarding my finances. I have complete confidence now in understanding my situation. I had no idea before. I couldn't get in touch with my advisor. And his advisor was older. You're absolutely right. Fear is, is a motivator for many people. Um, it's, you know, one of those things where uh, I can't remember how many times fear is mentioned in the Bible, but I think it says that it's mentioned 365 times. God says, don't fear, don't, don't have anxiety. So one time for every day of the of the year, which is just like God to do, if that's true. And I have to look, look we just had it in our, in our uh, men's group uh, the mm -hmm. other week about fear and all the verses related to it. But um, it's hard, you know, it, and that's why, you know, when you look at the teachings of Jesus, he talked to people, he said, you know, don't, don't worry about today's trouble tomorrow. Today's trouble has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. And he said, look at the, the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, you know, how God cares for these. Uh, that he, that, but he loves you so much more. Do you not have the faith to believe he's going to take care of you? It's something that I talk with my clients all the time. I have a call scheduled on Monday with one of my clients. It's just extremely jittery. Um, he makes it hard to work with him. His wife wishes he would stop. I've known him for a long time. I coached his son in basketball. Anyway, that, that's such a great point, John. That's very perceptive. And, and I really appreciate you bringing up the fear factor. Well, we've started to hit on this a little bit, Tommy, but once you've kind of begun to answer these questions, what are some of the pieces of information that you need to gather from a client to help them make these decisions? Well, that's it. They come in to my office and they sit right here in this conference room if they live in Georgia uh, and, they, and they want to. If they live in another state, we get on a Zoom call and we open up my financial planning software and, and I just pick the, first of all, I pick the type of plan that's going to be most appropriate for them after getting to know what they're trying to do. And, and, and we just go through John, you know, their date of birth, we go through, you know, are their parents still alive? We kind of look a little bit at that. We look at what their income is and that includes if they're working part-time, if they're still working, if they have social security, what, what that's going to be, we got to get their social security benefits together. We've got to get the things that they want to do and we, and we label it. We put needs, like, of course, we put health care as a need and we put, you know, the, you know, insurance, car insurance, homeowners insurance and all that is needs, you know, taxes on their home is needs. And then we put their wants and then we put their wishes and we go in and we, we, we label those, we give them values and we go through each of those expenses and we kind of, you know, first of all, we want to calculate when they're going to be getting their social security. You know, do you want to take it to 62 or 70? And so we work on that and how that's going to impact their income and their taxes. And then once we kind of work on that and get the income uh, and the expenses, we talk about that. We kind of begin to look at how we're going to invest the portfolio and run through different worst case scenarios. And then kind of I'll give them literally I give them a score of zero to ninety nine and, you know, how confident I am in what they're trying to do. And what were some suggestions I, that I can have for them? Usually people that are coming to me are, of course, number one, they're wealthy. Number two, they're, they're just, you know, if they're willing to pay me, they're a delegator. Yeah. You know, their belief, which I think is the right belief, is that, is that I can do it better than they can. And if they get peace of mind and they get to have a better plan than what they could on their own, they're willing to pay me whatever it is they pay me. They're, they're just willing to do it. Of course, you know, with the, money managers that I work with and the tax planning that we do and the financial plan, the way we put that together, I'm going to be able to increase their net worth over them after my fee. But even, but, but they had the view that they're just going to, you know, go in here and they're, they're concerned. They're usually very conservative and they don't know how long they're going to have to work. That client I referenced back in early on the show, the uh, Jerry that lives in Michigan, you know, he was, able to retire years before what he thought he was going to be able to because of him working with me. He just had no idea. He's, he, he's brilliant. Obviously, you know, you can't go through the schooling to be a CRNA. It's the hardest type of nurse. It's probably, 
you know, one step below in education from what an MD would do, um, but higher than a registered nurse. And so it's not that he wasn't intelligent or that he's not intelligent. It's that he, he, he didn't know, he, you know. I mean, I can look at it right away and say, you know, th this isn't a problem. You guys can retire whenever you want. And I've told many people that. And I've told a few people they were going to have to keep working or, or if they want to achieve, you know, certain of the goals that they've set. Like you said, Tommy, it's not a matter of intelligence or what it's just a matter of having different areas and fields of expertise and knowing they might be the best CRNA on the planet, but they might not have a good feel for the markets and retirement. And I got to imagine, too, somebody meeting with you and coming to plan out for you when they're a little bit younger. I would almost imagine the younger, the better, because you can plan long term as opposed to somebody coming to you at 60 and saying, OK, now what? Well, that's exactly right. Um you know, one of my clients today, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, it's hard to keep track, but I started working with him when he was 43. And it's like now he's in his 60s and it's like, oh my goodness, we've done all this work and here we are. It's like, I did it. You know, as a financial planner, it's like, well, he was one of my first financial planning client. I did my first full financial plan, which at the time you had to print out. It wasn't online. It was... I think 120 pages, which was way too many. And I did my first plan in 2003, a comprehensive everything, insurance, estate, um, you know, risk, liabilities, assets, income, and all of this. Yeah, we started when he was 43 and now he's um, retired from Hitachi. In one year, he won the number one salesman uh, in all of the country and they gave him a brand new Mercedes. And so it was good to see him win. But yeah, the earlier, I have another client that I went to high school with and she is a uh, sales manager and just absolutely crushes it. She's yeah. only uh, 47, but I started with her years ago, probably when she was 40. And so I've already been working with her for seven years. She's in beautiful shape. It's just amazing shape. And she wants to retire in her 50s and, and, and buy a house and like, cashers and I'm you know we're having to talk through some of this stuff like okay you're really wanting to get aggressive here you know retire in your 50s and buy a home in cashers and I think a second home if I'm not mistaken so that's what we're working on for her but but she's killing it and so it is good to start when you're younger if you can uh, for me because of my fees and all what I do for my clients and then just the you know the liability and all the things that are with my industry for a client to be able to work up to save, they, they typically will come to me when they're older. However, I do work with people off their incomes, we've mentioned at two to two and a half percent of their overall income. And so sometimes I can work with people that are younger. And I'm, in fact, I'm talking to a guy right now who's just doing so well mm -hmm. uh, in the technology field. And he's, I think he's, I think he's 37 or 39. He has four children and uh, I'm just talking to him now. He hasn't come on board yet, but, um, Boy, it sure would be great if I could get started with him because I think we could have him. It's like braces, you know. It takes a while to straighten those teeth out. And I think if I started working with him now, I could have him straightened out by 49. I mean, because he's, he's been conservative with what he's done, and they okay. compensate him uh, exceptionally well. So, and the stock options that he has is, is absolutely ridiculous. He's stressed. And he just wants to retire as soon as possible. Just Got whatever it. it is. And he'll, he'll, he said, you know, I'll take a pay cut. And I'll, you know, if I have to, you know, I'll, I'll make $120,000 a year. He thought that was a big cut in pay if he's making 120 grand a year. And he's, you know, but I understand he's, he, with what they've been paying him, it is a big pay cut for him. For sure. It's all relative. So. Tommy, as we're about out of time here, if somebody wants to come talk to you about planning their financial future and their retirement, what are the best ways to find you? Well, they can go to my website, which is thirdactretirement.com, and they can get on there and just hit get started and just schedule what I call a retirement ready success call. We'll go over where they are now and where they want to be. And then at the end of the call, we'll decide if we want to have another meeting. They can always call me on my toll free number, one 800 917-5016 or locally here in Georgia, 770-971-2888. So Tommy, today we've talked about what goes into deciding when you're going to retire. Next time we're going to talk about how to retire early. Look forward to it.